Saving the polar regions isn't a question of what can we do. It's can we do it in time? What we do in the next 10 years will determine the next thousand. No generation before us has ever been faced with the challenge on such a planetary scale or such an immense opportunity. For this is much bigger than ensuring polar bears and walrus have a place on our planet. This is about creating the world we ourselves want to live in. We are, of course, talking about climate change caused by the greenhouse gases we've released into our atmosphere. Two thirds of these are caused by the burning of fossil fuels in homes, power stations, by industry and in vehicles. So that means a planet sized solution is already within reach. And it boils down to two words, clean energy. The energy transition we need is already underway. The cost of solar power has fallen more than 70% in seven years. The cost of producing energy from some renewable sources is already undercutting fossil fuels. In the US, employment in solar energy is growing nine times faster than the rest of the economy. While for every dollar the US invests into clean energy, China invests too. By 2040, more than half of new cars sold will be electric. There is no question, in the future, everything we do will be powered by clean, renewable energy. But the question remains, can we get there fast enough? To keep global warming within safe limits, we need to reduce our carbon emissions by half every decade. For coal, that's the equivalent of closing two power plants every week for the next 20 years. If that sounds impossible, consider the power of exponential change to replace fossil fuels with renewables. If we start with a small change, but double it every few years, it soon becomes enormous. In practice, it means every time we reach a clean energy target, we need to double our ambition. If our governments and businesses accelerate this transition to clean energy with every decision they make, and if we all choose clean energy whenever we have that opportunity, we could pull off one of the most remarkable human feats of all time. That's not all we can do. Keeping global temperature within safe limits also requires that we capture the carbon we've been releasing into the atmosphere. It's another immense task, but in nature we have a powerful ally. If we stop cutting forests and allow cleared land to recover, the growing plants will actually draw carbon out of the atmosphere and lock it back up in themselves and the soil. Allowing other habitats to recover contributes too. From wildflower meadows to sea grass beds, mangroves to marshlands, all can lock away carbon and help us achieve our goal. Rewilding our planet is no longer just a nice thing to do. It's essential if we are to reduce the carbon in the atmosphere and stabilize our climate. This is the greatest challenge humanity has ever faced. But when we all pull together, Achieving the almost impossible is what we humans do best. And the rewards go far beyond stopping the polar ice from melting. 
renewables will drive down the cost of electricity, create millions of jobs, and stimulate our economies. Electric vehicles will transform the way we travel and make our streets safer and quieter. And we will eliminate air pollution, currently the greatest environmental threat to human health, so we will even live longer. Imagine stepping out onto the street and breathing deeply clean, fresh air. And of course, we'll have secured the future for walrus and polar bears too.